In this problem, given the bent bar, so we have here a, a rigid body composed of three bars, right? One here from A to C, two from C to B, and this one, third one, right? Uh, let's call this point B. And all of them have a length of 1.5 uh, meters and the uh, thickness is neglected. And we have a mass of two kilogram per meter. So it's a linear uh, distribution of the mass. And it's, it, it, they say to us that that is released from rest, right? Somebody's holding the bar over here. We release it and they are asking us to find the initial angular acceleration. Since this is a rigid body that is composed by other rigid bodies, which are three bars, the first thing that we want to do is find our center of mass, because since it's a rigid body, our equation of motion would include the acceleration of center of mass. So let's find the center of mass. So we will measure it from here. So we, want, we have to find this x and this y, right? So let me do it in this corner. As you recall, the center of mass is the center of each of those, right? Divided by the total mass. Okay, so the first one, let me write it over here. So this is the first G1, this is G2, and this is G3. So this is the particular center of mass of each of those bars. And this is G, which is the total center of mass of the total figure. So the first one will be located at 0 0.75. The length is 1.5, and the distribution of mass is two kilograms. So this is the first one. The second one will be this one right here that is located at 1.5, right? In x direction, 1.5 again times 2 plus. The third one is located at 0 0.75 times 1.5 times 2. And all that divided by 3 times 1.5 times 2, right? And so if I do that calculation, I have that this is twice this quantity plus this one. So I have that the center of mass is at negative one meter. And if I do the same for y, that will be, so the first one is located at zero, right? The second one is located as, at which coordinate system am I using? I can say if I'm using x and y, that will be a negative number, right? So I will get a negative number for my y. So it will be a 0 0.75, 1.5 times 2, and the other one will be a negative 1.5. 1.5 times 2, and the mass is exactly the same one as above. And as expected, it's located at the half, right? So y is located at 0 0.75 meters. So let's add the one zero to get the same precision. And this is the location of our center of mass. As I said, using that coordinate system, this is a negative number, right? So this is in magnitude 0 0.75, and this is 1.00 meters. OK, so if we do our free body diagram of our figure, we have what are the forces included in my free, in my free body diagram? So I have the weight. Right? And I have two forces. Since we have a pin at A that creates two reactions, right? AX and AY. And 
I, the weight I located at my center of mass. Then I have my kinetic diagram. Remember that any time that we want to use our equations of motion, doing the free body diagrams as we did in statics, remember that we always did our free body diagrams and adding forces and moment respect to our free body diagrams was equals to zero. Now is equals to our accelerations, right? So what do we have? We have a system rotating respect to point A. So if we set that as a radius of rotation, our system will rotate in a curvilinear motion, right? Our, and we will have a tangential acceleration and a normal acceleration. What is the tangential acceleration? You recall it's mass alpha. And these are, right? And this will be equals to mass omega square r. But you remember that it says that if it's released from rest, therefore this is equals to zero. So we don't have angular velocity for that instant. Obviously, when it moves more, we will have an angular velocity because we have an acceleration. So the, the speed is changing, right? The angular, the, the magnitude of that angular velocity is changing, but for the initial moment, we do not have one. And obviously, we have also rotation, right? So for that moment, we will have eg alpha, right? Because we are rotating respect to this point. So when we apply our equations of motion, we could take moment respect to point G, or we can take moment respect to A, and then the only unknown will be our angular acceleration. So I will take moment respect to point A. When we take moment respect to point A, moment respect to point A is moment respect to the external forces and moment of the inertia forces. So that will be equals to the only force right that I have here is the, mo the moment created by the weight, right, which is times the weight. That will be equals to inertia respect to A times alpha. And obviously, I have this value over here. Remember that the moment, the kinetic moment, has two terms, right, which is R cross ma, but this value is equal to zero because the acceleration of point A is equal to zero. So what I do have is the inertia respect to A. So I have to calculate the mass moment of inertia respect to point A. Let's do that. The mass moment of inertia respect to A will be the mass moment of inertia of each of these bars. Remember that the table gives us the mass moment of inertia respect to the center of mass of each of these bars. So we have to move that mass moment of inertia to point A. So let me write it down here so that we get very clear that that will be of bar one, bar two, and bar three, right? So let's do one of each, and I will put them in brackets so that we know what we are doing. All of them are 112, right, times the mass, which is uh, two times 1.5, which is, let's write it three already, times the length square. And then what is the distance from DG1 to point A is zero, uh, is one. Actually, be, be careful because this point is not the same as, let me draw it correctly. So this is 0 0.75, right, because it's the middle. And this one is the total center of mass, so that we don't want to make any error. So, and the parallel axis there is mass, which is again three, and the distance will be 0 0.75 squared. So that's the first one. The second one will be 112, three, 1 1.5 squared. And the distance to the, this point to that point will be this distance, which will be 1.5, and 0 0.75, so it will be three times 1.5 square plus 0 0.75 square. Oh, let me get that 
bracket here, I am missing one parenthesis, which is the one that multiplied by three, which is the mass. So here is the first one, here's the second, and I have to add the third one. Let me add it right here, which is 112, three, 1.5 squared. So as you see, the uh, mass moment of inertia is equal for the three bars, which is given by the table, right? What is different is when we move that bar to point A. That mass moment of inertia of the G of each bar to point A. So that will be three, and the distance in this case will be 0 0.75 and 1.5. So it will be 0 0.75 squared plus 1.5 squared. Okay, I have all these values calculated, so let me give you the value. So that would be equals to 20, 25 kilograms meter squared. So that's my mass moment of inertia respect to point A. Once I have that, then I, calculate, I can calculate alpha, right? So that will be very easy. Let me substitute those values. Let me call this equation one. So I go back to one and I get that 0 0.75 and the total weight will be mass time gravity, which is, it will be three times three because it's, three is the mass of each uh, bar, bar, right? And I have three bars times 9.8. One, and I will, oh, sorry about that. This is actually the location of my center of mass. Just always pay attention when you're writing. The location we calculated, right, this moment here is one. I don't know why I wrote 0 0.75. So this is one. Sorry, but it's very important that if you have a mistake in one of your calculations, you always double check, right? So this is one, three, bars times three, the mass times the gravity, and this is a, a, a positive moment, equals to the mass moment of inertia times alpha. So from here, we can solve for alpha. Four thirty-six radians over second squared. Okay, so if we like to find the values for AX and AY, we just have to do our other two equations of motion, which is adding forces in X. We do have acceleration, so we have to, uh, so we will have AX equals to, and we need to find this angle, right? So, so that will be mass alpha R cosine of theta, and the third equation right here will be Ay minus weight equals mass alpha r sine of theta in negative. We have a, the direction which is 0 0.75 and 1, so finding this angle is easy, so this is 1 and this is 0 0.75, right? So my angle, theta, which actually, be careful because the angle that I am finding is this one right here, which will be the same as this one right here, right? This one right here. So that will be, theta will be the tangent of one divided by 0 0.75. So if you substitute those numbers, I get AX and AY. Let me write it then down the results. Please substitute the values. AX is equals to 29.4 newtons and AY is equals to 49.1. And this is the result for this program.